I'm Phil Valentine. We welcome Tea Party Express to Nashville, Tennessee. And we're here for this historic event, which is to make sure that the real people that know what's going on in this country, and that's the folks out there like you and me, that we take back Washington November 2nd. Now we're on the final stretch, and we need your help because there are a lot of great races out there, but a lot of close races out there. So we want to get everybody involved. The key is turnout. We have to have everybody that's out here listening today turning out for this election. But not only that, we have to have you going out and bringing your friends to this election because it is going to be about getting the base energized and about getting people turned out for this election so that we can take back America for the conservatives in this country and take it back away from the socialists like Nancy Pelosi and the folks who have driven up a $5 trillion more debt than they had when they first took office in 2007. So it's all about you folks out there. It's all about the Tea Party Express. It's all about the Tea Party. It's all about America. Let's bring in, bring in Bill Hemrick. This gentleman is going to be uh, helping to spearhead an organization about the lame duck Congress, which is going to be after the November 2nd election. The November 2nd election is just the beginning, isn't it, Bill? It doesn't stop there. It starts there. That's exactly right, Phil. If uh, if we sit back on our laurels and 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 just just believe that uh, we've won, it's going to be like a 9/11 again. You know, everybody filled the churches and then the apathy set in and and we lost again. So we can't do that. You got to stay involved this time, folks, because if you don't we can go back to the same old rhetoric that we had before. That's right, and the problem is that we have a lame duck session where we've got a lot of the same scoundrels that were in there before are going to be doing some things that we don't want to do. You guys are going to be watching them with a lame duck tour coming up after November 2nd. Absolutely. Uh, we'll find out what the agenda is uh, November 1st. Uh, Marsha Blackburn's going to be giving out to us, and uh, I believe there's about another trillion dollars on the table that they will be voting on. Well, we will be watching, and we need Need to stop it now. Now, Bill, you did something that was, uh, I mean, you talked about something heartwarming, something that is very patriotic. You did something that there's an old poem called The Ragged Old Flag. Oh. And uh, can you set that up for us? Yeah, that was uh, done by Johnny Cash. He was a, a country music singer. He was a devout Christian, but he was a patriot. And, and no more than that can I think when I think about that flag, I, I think about the patriotism of this great country. So you'll be hearing it tonight, and I hope you get the same feeling that I get when I do it. Well, here's Bill Hemrick with that ragged old flag. Hi, I'm Bill Hemrick. I'd like to do a rendition of the ragged old flag with you. And it's really about the flag, but it's about our country also. A country that was, and hope someday it will be again. It goes like this. I walked through a county courthouse square. On a park bench, an old man was sitting there. I said, your old courthouse is kind of run down. He said, no, it'll do for our little town. I said, your old flagpole leans a little bit, and that's a, that's a ragged old flag you got hanging on it. He said, have a seat. So I sat down. He said, is this the first time you've been to our little town? I said, I think it is. He said, I don't like to brag, but we're kind of proud of that ragged old flag. You see that flag there? It got a little hole in Washington, took it across the Delaware. And it got powder burns the night that Francis Scott Key was setting it right and say, can you see? And it got a bad rip in New Orleans with, with Packenham and Jackson tugging at its seams. And it almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but, but she waved on, though. She got cut with a sword in Chancellorsville and and she got cut again at Shiloh Hill. It was Robert E. Lee and Beauregard and Bragg. And the south wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in, in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. She turned blood red in World War II. She hung limp and, and low 
a time or two. She was in Korea, in Vietnam. She went where she was sent by her uncle Sam. She waved from our ships upon the briny foam. But you know, folks, they've just about quit waving back here at home. In her own good land here, she's been abused. She's been burned, denied, dishonored, and refused. And the government for which she stands, now it's so corrupt throughout this land. And she's getting threadbare, and she's wearing it thin. But I guess she's in good shape for the shape that she's in. Because she's been through that fire before. And I believe, with your help, she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning and, and we take her down every night. And we don't ever let her touch the ground. And we fold her up right. You know, on second thought, I do like to brag. Because I'm really, really proud of that. You see that flag, folks? It has defended you from its conception. And now it's screaming out to you, each and every one, to defend me now. I tell you true, ladies and gentlemen, if, if today you do nothing, there will come a time when you will not be allowed to do anything. That's why we formed uh, the NFC, the National Fiscal Conservative PAC, for the sole purpose of supporting and, and getting conservative candidates elected to Congress. I would hope for a mere $5 a month or $60 a year that you will support this effort and help us obtain our goal. I thank you so much. God bless each and every one.